The only way there's going to be a change is if you are willing to go within and make the change. And that's so true. People make all sorts of New Year's resolutions, but because they don't make any internal changes, the resolutions fall away very quickly. I'm not going to smoke another cigarette or whatever, someone says. And right away, it's put in a negative phrase rather than one that will tell the subconscious mind what to do. In this situation, you could say instead, all desire for cigarettes has left me and I am free. Until we make the inner changes, until we are willing to do the mental work, nothing outside of us is going to change. Yet the inner changes can be so incredibly simple because the only thing we really need to change is our thoughts. What can you do for yourself this year that you didn't do last year that could be positive? Take a moment and think about this question. What would you like to let go of this year that you clung to so tightly last year? What would you like to change in your life? And are you willing to do it? There is a lot of information available that will give you ideas once you are willing to change. The moment you are willing to change, it is remarkable how the universe begins to help you. It brings you what you need. It could be a book, a tape, a teacher, or even a friend making a passing remark that suddenly has deep meaning to you. Sometimes conditions will get worse before they get better, and that's okay because the process is beginning. The old threads are untangling, so flow with it. Don't panic and think it's not working. Just keep working with your affirmations and the new beliefs you are planting. Making progress. Of course, from the moment you decide to make a change until you get the demonstration, there is a transitional period. You vacillate between the old and the new. You go back and forth between what was and what you would like to be or have. It is a normal and natural process. Often I hear people saying, well, I know all this stuff. And my answer is, are you doing it? Knowing what to do and doing it are two separate steps. It takes time until you are strong in the new and have gone the complete shift. Until then, you must be consistent in your efforts to change. For instance, many people say their affirmations maybe three times and give up. Then they say that affirmations don't work or they're silly or whatever. We want to give ourselves time to practice to make the changes. Change requires action. As I said, it's what you do after you say your affirmations that counts the most. As you go through this transitional phase, remember to praise yourself for each small step forward that you make. If you beat yourself up for the step backward, then change becomes oppressive. Use all the tools available to you as you move from the old to the new. Assure the little child inside that he or she is safe. Author Gerald Jampolsky says that love is letting go of fear and that there is either fear or there is love. If we are not coming from the loving space of the heart, then we're in fear. And all those states such as isolation, separation, anger, guilt, and loneliness are part of the fear syndrome. We want to move from fear into love and make love a more permanent position for us. There are many ways to change. What do you do on a daily basis to make yourself feel good inside? You're not going to do it by blaming other people or by being a victim. So what is it that you do? How are you experiencing peace within you and around you? If you are not doing it now, are you willing to begin? Are you willing to start creating inner harmony and peace? Another question to ask yourself is, do I really want to change? Do you want to continue to complain about what you don't have in your life? Or 
Do you want to really create a much more wonderful life than you have now? If you are willing to change, you can. If you are willing to do the work involved, then you can change your life for the better. I have no power over you, and I can't do it for you. You have the power, and you need to keep reminding yourself of that. Remember, maintaining inner peace will help us connect with like-minded, peaceful people all over the world. Spirituality connects us all over this planet on a soul level, and the sense of cosmic spirituality that we are just beginning to experience is going to change the world for the better. When I speak of spirituality, I don't necessarily mean religion. Religions tell us who to love and how to love and who is worthy. To me, we are all worthy of love and we are all lovable. Our spirituality is our direct connection with our higher source and we don't need a middleman for that. Begin to see that spirituality can connect us all, all over the planet on a very deep soul level. Several times during the day, you might stop and ask yourself, what kind of people am I connecting with now? Ask yourself periodically, what do I really believe about this condition or situation? And think about it. Ask, what do I feel? Do I really want to do what these people are asking of me? Why am I doing this? Start to examine your thoughts and feelings. Be honest with yourself. Find out what you are thinking and believing. Don't go on automatic pilot living your life by routine. This is the way I am and this is what I do. No, why do you do it? If it isn't a positive, nourishing experience, Figure out where it came from. When did you first do it? You know what to do now. Connect to the intelligence within you. Stress is another word for fear. We talk a lot about stress these days. Everybody seems to be stressed out about something. Stress seems to be a buzzword and we use it to the point where I think it's a cop out. I'm so stressed out or this is so stressful or all is stress, stress, stress. Stress to me is a fearful reaction to life's constant changes. It is an excuse we use for not taking responsibility for our feelings. If we can equate the word stress with the word fear, then we can begin to eliminate the need for fear in our lives. The next time you think about how stressed you are, Ask yourself, what is scaring you? Ask, how am I overloading or burdening myself? Why am I giving my power away? Find out what you are doing to yourself that is creating this fear within you that keeps you from achieving inner harmony and peace. Stress is not inner harmony. Inner harmony is being at peace within yourself. It's not possible to have stress and inner harmony at the same time. When you're at peace, you do things one at a time. You don't let things get to you. When you feel stressed, breathe and do something to release the fear so you can move through life feeling safe. Don't use the word stress as a cop-out. Don't give a little word like stress a lot of power. Nothing has any power over you. You are always safe. Life is a series of doors closing and opening. We walk from room to room having different experiences. Many of us would like to close some doors on old negative patterns, old blocks, situations that are no longer nourishing or useful to ourselves. Many of us are in the process of opening new doors and finding wonderful new experiences. I think that we come to this planet many, many times, and we come to learn different lessons. It's like coming to school. Before we incarnate at any particular time on the planet, we decide the lesson we are going to learn so that we can evolve spiritually. Once we choose our lesson, 
we choose all the circumstances and situations that will enable us to learn the lesson, including our parents, sexuality, place of birth, and race. If you've gotten this far in your life, believe me, you've made all the right choices for you. As you go through life, it is essential to remind yourself that you are safe. It is only change. Trust your higher self to lead you and guide you in ways that are best for your spiritual growth. As Joseph Campbell once said, follow your bliss. See yourself opening doors to joy, peace, healing, prosperity, and love. Doors to understanding, compassion, forgiveness, and freedom. Doors to self-worth, self-esteem, and self-love. You are eternal. You will go on forever from experience to experience. Even when you pass through the last doorway on this planet, it is not the end. It is the beginning of another new adventure. Ultimately, you cannot force anyone to change. You can offer them a positive mental atmosphere where they have the possibility to change if they wish. However, you cannot do it for or to other people. Each person is here to work out his or her own lessons, and if you fix it for them, then they will eventually have to do it again because they haven't learned for themselves. They haven't worked out what they needed to do. Love your sisters and brothers. Allow them to be who they are. Know that the truth is always within them, and they can change at any moment that they want. Chapter 15, a world where it's safe to love each other. We can either destroy the planet or we can heal it. Send some loving, healing energy to the planet every day. What we do with our minds makes a difference. The planet is very much in a period of change and transition. We are going from an old order to a new order. And some people say it began with the Aquarian age. At least the astrologers like to describe it that way. To me, astrology, numerology, palmistry, tarot cards, and all those methods of psychic phenomena are merely ways of describing life. They explain life to us in slightly different ways. So the astrologers say that we are moving out of the Piscean Age and into the Aquarian Age. During the Piscean Age, we looked to other people to save us. We looked for other people to do it for us. In the Aquarian Age, which we are now entering, people are beginning to go within, acknowledging that they have the ability to save themselves. Isn't it wonderfully liberating to be able to change what we don't like? Actually, I'm not so sure that the planet is changing as much as we are becoming more conscious and aware. Conditions that were brewing for a long time are coming to the surface, such as family dysfunction, child abuse, and our endangered planet. As with everything else, first we must become aware in order to make changes. In the same way that we do our mental house cleaning so that we can change, we are doing the same thing with Mother Earth. We are beginning to see our Earth as a whole living, breathing organism, an entity, a being unto itself. It breathes, it has a heartbeat, it takes care of its children, it provides everything here that we could possibly need. It's totally balanced. If you spend a day in the forest or somewhere in nature, you can see how all the systems on the planet work perfectly. It's set up to live out its existence in absolute perfect equilibrium and harmony. So here we are, great mankind who knows so much, and we are doing our very best to destroy the planet by disrupting this balance and harmony. Our greed gets in the way to an enormous extent. We think we know best, and through ignorance and greed, we are destroying the living, breathing organism of which we are a part. If we destroy Earth, where are we going to live? 
I know that when I talk to people about caring more for the planet, they become overwhelmed by the problems we are encountering now. It seems that just one person doing something will not affect anything in the entire scheme of things. But that is not so. If everyone did a little, it would wind up being a lot. You may not be able to see the effects right in front of you, but believe me, Mother Earth feels it collectively. We have a little table set up to sell books at my AIDS support group. Recently, we ran out of bags to put products in, so I thought I would start saving the bags I received when I was out shopping. At first I thought, oh, you don't have that many bags by the end of the week, but boy was I mistaken. I had bags coming out of my ears. One of my workers experienced the same thing. He said he had no idea how many bags a week he used until he started saving them. And when you put that in terms of Mother Earth, that's quite a few trees we're cutting down just to use for one or two hours because we usually end up by throwing the bags away. If you don't believe me, just try it for one week. Save all the bags you receive and just be aware of how many you use. I now have a cloth shopping bag that I use and if I'm shopping and have forgotten to bring it, I ask for a big bag and as I shop at other stores, I put my merchandise in one bag instead of collecting several. No one has ever looked at me twice for doing it. It just seems so sensible. <laughs>